The Napo River runs from Ecuador into the Amazon River in Peru. It is 840 kilometers long and is one of the most remote and beautiful areas in the Amazonian basin. It is also one of the most underdeveloped and does not benefit from the development services or ecotourism that other areas in the Amazon do. Most of the residents along the Napo River are mestizo in heritage and proud of their stewardship of the river. This mixed population has roots in such tribes as the Arabella, Huitoto, Quichua, Orion, and Yagua tribes. The further north you go up the Napo, the greater the indigenous-only population. Communities along the Napo are geographically and sometimes tribally isolated. It takes several hours to a few days in a dugout canoe to go between communities, although there are limited commercial boat services on old steamer boats that traverse the Peruvian length of the river every five days. The only connection that communities up and down the Napo have is through a series of health posts which use a motley selection of technologies to communicate with each other from CB radio to voice over IP. This depends on the urgency of the issue and the availability of the technology. There are 17 wireless antenna towers on the mid and upper sections of the Napo, which are the areas in the most need of development services. While the health posts enjoy connectivity between each other, and thus the general health of the communities has benefited, members of the community do not have access to these technologies unless they are the designated health post technicians. Aside from health, these communities have other significant information and communication needs. In the summer of 2009, two University of Colorado professors and one graduate student, who actually worked on the NAPO setting up these towers prior to coming to the university, visited communities on the Napo to understand development wants and needs firsthand. They visited seven towns over three weeks, including Santa Clotilda, San Rafael, Copalorco, Takshakurai, Negro Urgo, and Tutopisco. They met with over 100 people to determine community priorities and potential opportunities for collaboration and advancement. The University of Colorado at Boulder has distinct expertise in rural development, including basic services engineering, such as water, sanitation, and hygiene, as well as providing information and communication technologies for developing regions. The Mortensen Center in Engineering, along with the Atlas Institute and other development efforts campus-wide, provides holistic and integrated development programs that incorporate education, health, gender, governance, and economic capacity building to better help communities help themselves. In the Napo region, community leaders and members explained that they wanted to increase educational opportunities to their children. There are only a few high schools along the Napo, and these are inaccessible to thousands of children who live in communities that only have elementary schools. Even in the elementary schools, it is difficult to retain instructors and students alike. The isolation and lack of access to resources make this region unattractive to teachers and student-aged children often have to work on the land or water to help provide food for the family. Nonetheless, students and parents alike are eager to find ways to better educate not only children but also adults to pass the high school equivalency tests in Peru. Upon passing these tests, a world of opportunities previously out of reach are more available to people, including jobs and vocational training programs. Such opportunities then will feed back into the community, raising the standard of living through new and marketable skills, and promoting the cycle of education. With 50% of the population under 18, education is critical to community development. The antenna towers between the community health posts provide enough bandwidth to support a closed Wi-Fi phone-based system that connects elementary schools with high schools thus facilitating the kinds of distance education opportunities that have been previously unavailable. Internet access and commercial mobile phone systems will not come to these communities for a long time to pass, but inexpensive Wi-Fi phones and access points make real-time, point-to-point communications easy and accessible, as well as free to users. While education may be the priority up and down the Napo, the communities on the river are facing other critical development issues. There are myriad competing commercial efforts to take over land for oil and timber, which have caused armed conflicts between oil companies, the Peruvian military, and the river communities. 
There are significant clean water and hygiene needs, as 75% of the population suffers from recurrent malaria. Unemployment, alcoholism, and domestic concerns plague these beautiful communities. There is no telling how the Wi-Fi phones may be used to address these and other community issues, but it is a worldwide phenomenon that people repurpose technology to fit their needs and create the networks required to address these issues from within the community and culture. The only limit to communication is people's imagination and creativity, which is not lacking among the NAPO. The Napo River Project is looking for support and volunteers who are interested in technical implementation and social impact. University of Colorado students will be creating the Wi-Fi systems based on the community requirements gathered already, and students will be needed to deploy the technologies and train communities to use and maintain the systems going forward. The education project described is the first pilot project that the University of Colorado will implement which will lead to greater coordinated development efforts in the NAPO Basin, including larger education deployments, more traditional engineering projects, and collaborations with in-country institutions and non-governmental organizations. We envision several engineering, computer science, telecom, ATLAS, and other students working in region on a variety of development projects that stem from this initial engagement. In time, students may spend semesters in region as part of their research and practicums. The Napa River Education Project provides several potential areas for collaboration, not just between the university and the Napa River communities, but between university academic communities who have an opportunity to be greater than the sum of their individual parts.